What's going on everybody? Welcome back to the Alice Nerd Show. I'm back with more Star Wars Black Series figures and today we've got the new comic book wave. So in this wave we get characters featured in these comic books over the Star Wars history. Some old, some new, but all four very cool looking figures. But in this wave we have Jackson, Kirkanos, Luke Skywalker, and Darth Maul. And so each of these is featured like a book. So I thought these were more based off books, but it seems they're actually based off comic book series. So like the Jackson here we have from Star Wars Adventures. So this was when he was brought back in 2018 in the comic book of the Star Wars Adventures annual but the picture it's actually showing is the 2019 annual and of course this is celebrating the 50th anniversary of Lucasfilm so it's a part of that but it's in this nice big box form like a book and everything so it says Jackson on the side another picture on there and around on the back we have the Lucasfilm timeline there again with all the Star Wars and around on the sides of the box we have all sorts of pictures from like the comic series and everything but we can go in and open up so there's our figure of the Green Rabbit itself and then another picture in the story that we'll kind of talk about so these are very cool getting figures and in this box design kind to design like books so I think that is really cool so that's awesome so we have Jackson there then we have Kirkanos which it's labeled as Carner Jax but that's a different figure they kind of messed up on this one but it's from the comic book series Star Wars Crimson Empire from 1997 and there's a picture of Kirkanos again not Carner Jax there and there's a picture of him on the inside there a picture from the comic series and everything and again that whole book design with more pictures of him from the comics then we got Luke Skywalker from Heir to the Empire which is a very popular Star Wars book that I've had for many years myself but this is based more off the comic adaptation they did back in 1995 so it's going to be the same storyline just in a comic edition so there's pictures of Luke we have Admiral Thrawn there which is the series he was introduced into again all nice book design and there's a look at Luke there on the inside with the little lizard that I don't know how to pronounce the name and then more pictures there of the side so that's awesome and then our final figure is Darth Maul so we've had multiple Lukes and Darth Mauls so nothing really new going on just their outfits are a little bit different but the Darth Maul is really cool so this is from the Star Wars Darth Maul comic comic book series which I did actually get this series is one of the last series of comics I got but this was in the past like 2017 I think it was what it was from but it's pretty much just leading up to Phantom Menace just showing like Darth Maul's training and everything so it looks very awesome so he's shirtless and stuff showing off his skin of course all the nice red and black there but everything else is pretty much Darth Maul we've seen before and again in that awesome book design so I'm very excited to open these figures and check them out again the Luke and Darth Maul we've seen multiple times but it's awesome that Luke comes with that lizard that we'll see and then getting the Jackson and the Kirkanos are pretty awesome so I'm excited to check out those mostly so let me go ahead and get these open and we'll check them out together so we're starting off here with jackson which looks pretty awesome so of course it reminds me immediately of bucky o'hare just because it's a green rabbit in a spacesuit. so that's the obvious connections that i got here but it looks pretty awesome very basic but awesome at the same time so it looks like a humanoid rabbit so with the face looks very rat you know it looks like a rabbit but it is humanish as well and of course it reminds me of like all like the old shows and stuff where they would put people in costumes as like you know the easter bunny and stuff like that that's just what they're reminds me of so I do feel it's a little bit creepy but I think it looks overall pretty good nice green fur and everything looks pretty great there I like the change into the front there with the nose and the mouth and the teeth sticking out there big ears sticking up over his head here they're just kind of up in the air so it looks pretty nice and then he's in just a space suit it looks just you know, like they repurpose like a pilot suit or something nothing too drastic going on here just has the red jumpsuit on so jumpsuit goes all the way through even has some nice texture going into it there has an orange chest pad on there nice shoulder armor there and the nice gray going up all the way over his shoulders on the sleeves got some of the code canisters there gray gloves belt around his waist with two holsters on it and gray shoes going up his legs so not very rabbitish or anything besides the head so it just looks like you know a new nice space creature perfectly fits in the star wars but jackson is a leppy smuggler from coachella prime and he is the captain of the ship or the rabbit's foot so kind of neat name there and he first appeared in the original marvel run of the star wars comics back in 1977 and he just went on many different adventures teamed up with han solo and chewbacca multiple times and then he was brought in more recently into the Star Wars Adventure comics and as I mentioned earlier in 2018 and everything so he is brought into the actual canon now instead of the legends so I think that's pretty cool that they did make him into a figure you know it doesn't look nearly as cartoonish and everything as he did in the comics and all that but I still think they did a really job you could definitely put this with all the other Star Wars characters and it would fit in just fine but for the figure's movements his head can twist all the way around he can look down just a little bit and his face contacts with the color of his armor so you can't really go down too much but he can look up so if it wasn't for that you'd have really good movements in the neck uh, then we got the shoulders that come up to 90 degrees there and can rotate all the way around we get the single elbow joint that bends to 90 degrees there and has the rotation and then we get the wrist that can twist around and flex back and forth we have an ab crunch right in the orange chest piece so it allows it to crunch back and forth there not a whole lot of crunching but then it can also turn side to side as well we got the hips that come up 90 degrees out to the side that far thigh twist all the way around a double knee joint that can bend up that far in the back he can kick his own butt and then we get the foot that flexes back and forth and can 
twist side to side. So it's a pretty decent figure. As I said, the body and stuff doesn't make it too crazy. You know, it's just like your standard Star Wars figure, but with the green rabbit head on it, it makes it stand out a lot. And the only accessory he comes with are two handguns here. So we have two dual guns. So obviously you can put them in each of the holsters, but let's go ahead and pop them in his hands. So there we got the guns in Jackson's hands and that looks pretty awesome. So overall to me, it's not the greatest figure ever, but it is a really nice looking figure. And again, with the way they made it look more realistic, it will fit perfectly on the Star Wars shelf. And next up, we have my favorite figure from the set because it just looks awesome. It is the Darth Maul, again, from the Darth Maul comic series. And just just looks awesome. So, again, we've had Darth Maul multiple times before, especially in the more recent version with the Archive Wave. But he did have a shirt on, so this time we have him shirtless. But he's exactly the same from the waist down. So, we still have the same pants, legs, same skirty material, same shoes and everything. So, that's all the same there. We just have the shirtless bodies. He has a Zabrak, so he has the colored skin with the black detailing so they can be, like, yellow. But for Darth Maul, he's red. So, he looks awesome with all all the red and the black detailings it looks like he's just covered in tattoos and everything but it's just his skin and then of course the normal Darth Maul face nice teeth showing there the beady eyes and of course the spikes up on the top of his head and the black skin with the red on the face just makes him look creepy and terrifying so he's just awesome but for his movements that can twist all the way around he can look down that far and up that far so pretty good movements so he does have movements in the actual neck so up in the neck joint there but then he also has it right at the chest as well so it allows that a little additional more movements in there his shoulders come up 90 degrees has a little bit of butterfly joint can rotate all the way around we get this single elbow joint that bends to 90 degrees and has the rotation and then the wrist can twist around and flex back and forth we have an ab crunch and twist right in the middle there so he can crunch back and forth a little bit there and twist all the way around the hips can come up 90 degrees and out to the side that far we have a thigh twist it's a little bit stiff in there but thigh twist that can twist all the way around a double knee joint that can bend up that far in the back's not too bad and then the foot that can flex back and forth and twist side to side so it's just an awesome looking figure i absolutely love it but of course it starts small so we have to to have his dual bladed lightsaber here so it just looks awesome of course you can't split it in the middle have the two individual pieces or you can just pop it back together have the cool double blades there and then we also have the peg to go onto his waist so there's a hole there on his waist that you can take the blades off and pop that in if you want but let's go ahead and just put this in his hand so there i got the lightsaber in darth maul's hands and i think he just looks awesome there so that is a great looking figure and next up we have kirkanos which was a member of the emperor's royal guard so that's why we see him in the royal guard armor and again he was from the star wars crimson empire comic from 1997 and throughout that storyline he survived the destruction of the empire and swore to revenge Emperor Palpatine and went out and became one of the most wanted men in the galaxy. Now on the box it said this was Karner Jax which is another character in the storyline that was a royal guard as well. But they kind of came head to head because Karner Jax started to kill off like the emperor's clones and everything throughout the story kind of eliminating the emperor altogether. So Kirkanos found out about that and started to kind of go after Karner Jax and Karner Jax kind of put out a bounty on his head and Karner tried to become the new emperor and everything. So that kind of also made Kyrkanus wanted by both the Rebels and the Empire. But it looks pretty awesome here, and again, it is in that Royal Guard style armor, so it looks pretty awesome. Mostly all red. This one has black into it as well in the center, which kind of makes it stand out really well. I really enjoy that. But still has the normal Royal Guard head with the little like visor piece there. Again, red armor there over the body glove, and then the body gloves that red and the black underneath there. But the armor looks awesome. You know, it looks kind of like hockey padish or something like that, but still looks awesome. Nice pockets, everything there on the belt, red gloves on the hands. And then we've got boots with armor going up the legs there that go up pretty high over the knee so overall it just looks awesome and the thing that makes it look even cooler is that if we then kind of unfold the cape because i like how they have it kind of folded on here already where it kind of goes in like the triangle shape but as you can see there underneath it it's got this nice purple into it so it really just stands out there so like especially you start kind of unfolding it kind of getting it up over his arms and stuff helps make that purple stand out a lot more so the purple and the red and black just looks incredible there so that is just an awesome looking design and i just absolutely love this i love purple so it makes it even look even better than me so that is just awesome Awesome. But for the figure's movements, his head doesn't really move too much at all just because the big helmet piece, it goes down the back, goes down the front. So no real movements or anything. So just a little twisting side to side. The shoulders can come up 90 degrees there and can rotate all the way around. We get the single elbow joint to 90 degrees and the rotation. We get the wrist that can twist around and flex back and forth. And we have the ab crunch right in the midsection. That allows the crunch back and forth. But again, with the armor pieces, you don't really get too much. But it allows it to crunch there and can twist side to side a little. We have the hips that come up 90 degrees and out to the side that far. We have a thigh twist that can twist all the way around double knee joint that can bend up that far in the back not too bad and then the foot that rocks back and forth and can twist side to side so with him being a royal guard they usually come with the staff they hold in the hand you know it's like a weapon of some sort well with this one he comes with a double-ended vibro blade so we have a blade on each end and it is a vibro blade so it has the you know movement like we saw in the mandalorian and it has the nice staff here so very similar to darth maul with the double bladed thing like the royal guards you can hold it a upside down with the way the hand's kind of weird it's got the weird finger point there because he does also come with a little gun as well so you can put that in to his 
hand and kind of fit with this gun, have the little trigger finger there and then just kind of point. But I think with this also, you can kind of get it where his hand is like twisted to the side. So it's a very weird way to hold it, but I know that's how like the Royal Guards held it. And if we could get this into his hand. So there, if you get in his hand like that, he can hold the blade up like that. So again, very similar to how the Royal Guard always used to hold their little staff and stuff. But you can also then readjust it, you know, get it in both hands. But I think it looks pretty cool. Just having like that classic Royal Guard pose there with the bladed weapon. But then of course the red and black armor with that purple cape design and stuff just looks awesome. And so I really enjoy this figure. This is definitely like my favorite figure out of the set, but I just think it looks pretty awesome there. With just the look alone, it makes it an awesome figure. And our final figure is the Luke Skywalker from Star Wars Heir to the Empire from 1995 comic series. And he looks pretty decent. This looks pretty much exactly like the Dagobah Luke we've already had before. Just they painted it all black. So it has very similar shirt design without the sleeves and they painted it all black and has that texture into it. Then he's got the pants that are painted all black even as like the pocket design stuff there going all the way down to the boots and even has like the hostile boots just painted in all black this time. So I feel they just reused that figure which is perfectly fine. You know they have the Luke body already that's pretty similar to the comic so they just took it and painted black. And then we have his face again, doesn't really look very good like Mark Hamill. They just can't seem to get his face right, but I think it doesn't look horrible. You know, you can definitely tell it's Luke. It's nice sand brown hair and the longer style there and the shagginess, everything. I really like the hair design. They definitely did a really good job there though. And of course, Heir to the Empire is a big long story. There's like a three book set to it. And then of course they made all these comics, but just the storyline set five years after Return of the Jedi. So it's kind of continuing on the Star Wars story there. And so that's why Luke kind of looks like he does in the black and everything. Then we'll see his lightsaber and all that. But for the figure itself the head can twist all the way around we can look down that far and up that far and again it has the separate neck so it has the joint there and down in the neck as well so you have the two separations the shoulder comes up 90 degrees and can rotate all the way around we get the single elbow joint that bends to 90 degrees and has the rotation and then we get the wrist that twists around and flex back and forth ab crunch and twist right there in the midsection go crunch back and forth and can twist all the way around hips come up 90 degrees out to the side that far thigh twist all the way around there just a little bit stiff single knee joint that bends up 90 degrees degrees and has the rotation and the foot flexes back and forth and twists side to side. And again this is set after Return of the Jedi so we get Luke's green lightsaber since that's what he would have at the time. So his nice awesome green lightsaber, the nice hilt and everything and the green blade. So let's pop this into his hand. So there we got Luke and the lightsaber which lightsaber is a little bent unfortunately. So that kind of things got messed up in the box. So that looks awesome and he also came with this. I don't know how to say it exactly. I think it's like Isalamiri maybe or something. Not exactly sure but it is a lizard that is commonly seen with Thrawn and this lizard is known for having four Force blocking abilities so Thrawn tends to wear around his neck and so it'll allow him to be able to confront Jedi's and everything since their force powers will be blocked so with this obviously you can take and put it around Luke's neck and it just kind of sits on there it doesn't sit pretty well but it's actually made for Thrawn and like I even read a thing from the creators from Hasbro that they actually made it to be able to fit on Thrawn so we have the archive Thrawn here from a while ago and it just sits right on his neck doesn't of course fit perfectly on there but it does sit up there on his neck so you can add that to your Thrawn so I think that is awesome so it's definitely worth getting this Luke just to be able to get the Isalamari there to put up on Thrawn's shoulders and stuff because that looks awesome and it fits perfectly there for Thrawn. So there is our Star Wars Black Series comic book wave where we got figures based off the comic series where we had Jackson, Kier Kanos, Darth Maul, and Luke Skywalker. So four great looking figures. Luke's kind of the most let down one of me just because it's Luke we've had. So it's kind of a figure you don't really need unless you absolutely want it but the Isalamari makes it worth it to me. So that kind of all works out in the end. But I think they're four great looking figures. All great looking designs especially to Darth Maul and the Kier Kanos just look awesome and I can't say much better about them. But let me know your opinions of these figures down in the comments down below and have you pick these figures up for yourself. But if you enjoyed my review please leave a thumbs up for me and if you want to see more hit that subscribe button. But I want to thank you all for watching. I hope you all stay awesome out there and I'll see you in our next review.